Hello, my name is Rod and I'm making a little video to introduce myself and talk about ANSI 230, the fall version, which is fall um, 2021, domestic animal physiology. You're lucky to have me as an instructor because I've worked with all the domestic animals. All the typical farm animals, all the companion animals. And uh, right now we're playing with some border collies. Don't hurt yourself. The heavy panting one is Annie because she's a ball fanatic. She will die chasing after tennis balls. Diesel, who goes up here, okay, is a fanatic, but not to the extent that Annie is. Yo! So, I've got all kinds of stories to tell you, will tell you in class about my experiences with animals. I have a lot of unique experiences that most people in the world don't. For example, do you know anybody in the world that's done mid-ventral laparotomy surgeries? on sheep that were in heat and electrocauterized the graphene or preovulatory follicles that were on the ovary and then went back in the same incision three days later to see if new follicles grew? Or how about somebody that's castrated a 500 pound boar and boars all the way from 40 days of age up to, there's Annie, uh, about 500 pounds. There we go. So those are border collies. We live out in the country. We always have animals. Some of them that we not really don't want. Right under the picnic table I'm sitting on right now, there was a four foot snake earlier that I moved into the trees. We don't kill really anything here. Um, we try to coexist with all, all nature, although sometimes it's, I don't want to say a battle, but uh, things become overgrown or the raccoons get too close or the coyotes. Yes, Annie. Okay, so anyway, I'm the instructor for ANSI 230 in the fall. My name's Rod Allrich, and I'll be showing you the syllabus. There'll be some reading you can do, um, and I'll work out the syllabus where I talk about what will be doing for assessments. I think I'm going to do some online assessments where you turn something in to Brightspace, but we'll also be doing some stuff in class. I'm anxious to see people in class. Right now we're scheduled for the large room in the classroom in 1950, and that means we can have dogs running around certain times. So that'll be fun. And I've got the, re the room, that big auditorium, reserved for the first hour after class on a couple days. And then I also have, on the other days it's not available, I have a room in that same building we could hold a little study session. That's Annie there. If I didn't say so, they're litter mates. Uh, so they've been together since their in utero days. Annie is a fanatic. Don't hurt yourself there. And uh, they're fun. We always have animals. I'm not sure if I said that we at one time peaked out at five dogs and four cats and my wife jokingly said, if we go to double digits, I'm moving to town. Uh, anyway, we've had a lot of great times out here and I've had a lot of great, a lifetime of animal experience, which I want to share. Okay, well I've moved inside. As you can tell, I'm on a screen now, and I'll tell you what program I'm using in a minute, but it's always good to have a little humor. Uh, that's not me, but oh my gosh, that's going to be ready to explode. The reason why you shouldn't sunbathe after eating yeast cake. If you're familiar with yeast, it usually expands when it's warmed up and stuff. So, yeah, let's hope that doesn't rupture. Maybe that's the word it brings up, rupture. I'm using a program, and I don't have any 
financial dealings with these guys, but I kind of like their program. There's a lot of stuff you can use, but I'm using, and I'm going to do the laser pointer now. <clears throat> Up here it says explain everything. The website to look at this program is called explaineverything.com. I kind of like it. It's got like a monthly fee and for an undergraduate at you know like let's say at the beginning of the month you could subscribe to it for you know I don't know what is it maybe about five dollars and then at the end of the month don't renew it and you've used it for a month anyway just something to think about it's um, kind of a neat little program explain everything dot com <clears throat> sorry now, if you noticed in the video when the dogs were getting the tennis balls, you should have noticed, or if you were <laughs> a good observer, their coats were being blown. So here's Annie uh, this spring as well, not long after a brushing, but in the videos that I made, the video just at the beginning of this thing, their coats were being blown again. So. No, I know how to brush my dogs. It's just like, man, it's springtime, late spring, and they're blowing their coats. But look at Diesel here. That's a pretty smooth coat. Border Collies. They're so much fun. Like you saw in the video at the beginning, they are fanatics. <clears throat> Tennis ball fanatics. So, now we're talking about Ansi. 2.30 for the fall, fall 2021, which is crazy, the year 2021. Anyway, all my stuff is, in, is at rodhours.com. When you see the syllabus, there will actually be two other websites that are redundant. So if one stops working, just go to another. But we'll talk about that later. But I just want to make sure at least you know where to start rodalrich.com. If you remember my name, you will remember the website. Here's what it looks like when you get to the website. It'll say Animal Biology by Rod. It'll have some kind of email address up there. I've got num number. And then what you'll want to do, well, you can look at all these things, like look at Bryce, Brightspace. You'll be submitting some things up there. I'll show you what recent visitors to Rod's webpage looks like. There's animal and food recall sites. Um, the main one, though, for us is courses. So then when you do log on the courses, it'll have our courses listed by name, not really number, because a lot of people come to the website. So that's what I wanted to show you. Recent visitors to Rob's <laughs> Rob's rods web page so i want to show you that because it's amazing how many people come to this website that i've made <clears throat> and here it is each little red dot is a visit i'll get my little red pointer going of course a lot of these up here in the great lakes area would be um animal science students at purdue but I mean, look how many other places hit it. Uh, Europe, even the Middle East, Africa, South America, Australia, New Zealand, China. Mm, I don't think South Korea has hit any right now. Taiwan. And there's hardly a day goes by that I don't get an email from somebody in the world wanting something. So now, when you do click on courses, I want to show you what page it goes to next. It goes to a page that looks like this that has five courses listed over a fall and spring semester I teach five distinct courses, which is a little ludicrous. But that's another subject. Anyway, another time. 
So in the fall, and this is for Anside 230 that I'm making this video, so that's you guys right here, Physiology of Domestic Animals. You should know the domestic animals are all the typical farm animals, plus basically dogs and cats, maybe some other pets like rabbits. <coughs> They're domesticated. Also includes pol poultry, poultry, sorry. But, uh, man, poultry are different than mammals, so... We do talk about them some, but they almost need a separate course. And we did have a separate course on birds. And don't don't get me started, but the person left that was teaching it, and it's gone. Anyway, so in the fall, I teach ANSI 230. I teach animal health management. That's ANSI 345. And I teach companion animal management. That's ANSI 446. Then in the spring, I teach these two classes, Biology of Companion Animals and Environmental Physiology. So every semester, I have probably 220 students plus. And so here's one thing right now. Whenever you email me, on the subject line, put the course number, like 230 question mark, 345 question mark, 446. And then you can do your question in the, in the body of the email. But it's like, don't ask me something without identifying what course. Because like, okay, when will that assignment be due? Or how did you define that? I mean, def definitions shouldn't be different. But give me a heads up in the subject line. You could just could do the, the numbers 230 and then put a question mark in. And then go to the text of the email. <clears throat> Anyway, that's the page you get when you click on Courses. And then, of course, when you're going to click on Physiology of Domestic Animals, which the course is what we're talking about now, then you'll get this next page, which I'll bring out. This is just the top of that page and not the whole page. So... What you'll get is Physiology of Domestic Animals. Go to the syllabus, of course. That's really important. By the way, the first week of class isn't syllabus week. I can't tell you how I think that doesn't promote learning. We hit the ground running on week one. You should read the syllabus before you get there. I won't really go much to the syllabus, but I will this time, this video. <clears throat> anyway, there's all kinds of stuff uh, to learn, learning resources. And you can read the list down here. You can go to it all. And the thing is, the first week, I'll give you an example here. So the topic for the first week is hematology. Literally means, literally means the study of blood. The week of X, the week of August 23rd. That's like the Monday of school starts. And then we don't have an expensive textbook. Here's your textbook right here. Red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets, blood transfusions, and toxic trees. You might say, Rod, why would you do toxic trees? What ends up being some of the trees that animals eat, the leaves especially, and the wilted leaves, wreck the blood. And so that's why I throw, throw it in, in there. And this semester, we're going to always make sure that the students understand love, or could answer, what could go wrong? Um, the TAs, which will be helping us, they're really under the umbrella of, make sure you talk to the students of what could go wrong or what goes wrong so the second week also there's got some wrong things let's put it that way or pathophysiology is a better way of saying that so you whoever you are you could start reading it for sure probably the first four weeks of the semester are set it doesn't show it here. It just shows the first three weeks. But I probably won't add anything here, won't add anything here, won't add anything here. But if I do, it'll be kind of minor. 
But I, you know, I might because somebody might say, I've never heard of heparin before. Can you share a little bit about heparin? And I might find a little article and put it in our reading. It won't be much added above what's here. So you could start studying now. And you, we're going to do the syllabus in a little bit here. So I'll be talking more about that. Okay, now I'm going to explain a little bit about the syllabus, not a lot. So go ahead, look at it. You know where it's at now, rodhours.com. And you click on Physiology, Domestic Animals under Courses, and then you'll get to the syllabus like I just showed you. Um, I've got all kinds of emails here. I'm going to put my red laser on. Right, you could send email to rallrich at purdue.edu, rod at rodallrich.com, or ceo at rodallrich.com. It, it all gets to me. When you're looking for help, see me in class. Come to class. That's the bottom line. Uh, the website where the material is at is there. We don't have a textbook because I've made links to material. Course topics, course subtopics. Of course, we meet in the classroom in 1950, that big auditorium. Wow. Class will start at 11.35. You'll say, I thought it was 11.30. No. I always start my classes five minutes after the assigned time because people are running from physics or Lynn Hall or wherever. And uh, 10 minutes doesn't do it anymore. Don't get me started on why I would never arrange the classes like they have them at Purdue or maybe most universities. It's ridiculous. But anyway, 11.35, we start. After class, we're, we have study sessions in the same building every day. On Monday and Wednesday, we have to leave the big room and go to room 129. But on Tuesday and Thursday, we stay in the big room for another hour, if you wish. Wow. Here's a little hint. Here's the question. What's the best time to review material from a lecture you were just in? Answer, right after the lecture ends. As soon after the lecture ends as possible is the best time to review your notes. Yeah, anyway, assessments of learning. We're going to have six what I call take-home exams. I'll show you one example of one. They are really what I would call in call fill in the paragraph. You'll get some words and then it'll say, you know, make a paragraph on liver physiology or blood formation or something. And you will you can study with a hundred people. But when you sit down and write these paragraphs, which I'll show you, do it yourself because when you submit it to Brightspace, Brightspace will automatically send it to what's called turnitin.com. Think of a supercomputer that knows everything that's on the internet. It'll evaluate your paragraph, paragraphs, against the world. It's pretty powerful. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> If it has a similarity score of 20% or higher, I can't grade it because that means too much has been gleaned from the real world. So your score needs to be 19 or lower. We'll, we'll show you this in class. So six take-home exams. You'll have many days to do them. You upload them to, into Brightspace. But here's 12 in-class pop quizzes. Wow. So wow. That means maybe I should come to class. Maybe I should study before class. Maybe I should keep up on the reading. Um, you know, this isn't my first rodeo, right? But I really love to pr promote learning by students. 
And this is like, okay, someday at near the end of the hour, we'll pass out a quiz. And it won't be the same for all students. Maybe you get a crossword puzzle, your neighbor gets fill in the blank, another neighbor gets a drawing, draw this, draw that, and label. And maybe make some function statements, because physiology is function. So, yeah, it promotes retrieval from your brain. And before class starts, between now, which I'm doing this in the early morning hours of July 11th, between now and next month on the 23rd when class starts, I'll send you some examples. You can practice these pop-up exams, pop exams. Final exam, no, we're going to be done. Dead week policy, well, we're done too. We won't meet. That means you can study for other things. Now, during dead week, maybe there might be a some paragraphs due or maybe due nearing finals, whatever, but it'll be like you'll have many days to do the take-home exams up here, okay? Let's say number six you end up getting during, let's say, the dead week. Well, it might not be due till halfway through finals week. You know, you'll have all kinds of time and you won't say I had to do it during dead week, whatever. So then there's the course grade breakdown. And so now what I want to do is show you one of those, and let me go back to this page here. I want to show you what these take-home exams will consist of. That's what I'm going to do now. Remember, I'm using explain everything. I kind of like this. I can bring things in and out, enlarge them, point to them, whatever. Okay, so now this isn't going to be your first assessment because this is on neural physiology. So, but you're going to get things like this. Create a paragraph on X physiology. This one happens to be neural. That incorporates the following 10 items. Please bold the items when you in the paragraph so Rod can see how many times you use them. Uh, counts. Okay, your paragraph must fit on one page. So what happens is you'll get a this is what be take home. So you'll download them from my website, do them in a number of days, and then upload them into Brightspace. So look at this word, this uh, paragraph. So you're going to write a paragraph on some aspect of neurophysiology, but the 10 words, items that are listed there should maybe hone in a little bit on something in particular. So we have dog, para, that means you're going to use para and connect it to some other part. Digest, atropine, surgery, decrease, agent, antidote, gut, and then peri. And you're going to put peri, connect peri with something. And then you're going to write your paragraph down here. Okay, you can delete this when you're doing your paragraph. But you're going to put it there bold these words that appear and you're going to do that for four or five paragraphs this one said five that was from a semester ago or two we'll see if we do four or five if we do five each paragraph is worth 20 points if we do four each paragraph would be worth 25 points each of these assessments will be worth 100 points total yeah so we'll practice that too so that's it. That's my message. Hopefully um, everything's clear, but it may not be. And you can just email me questions. Best of luck, guys. You'll be hearing from me multiple times before classes start. Practice retrieval is big. Retrieving out of your brain what you know and practicing that. That's an emphasis. Bye-bye.